Hey YouTube, Bearded Bristol here, and I'm just a guy who likes to talk and paint. As you can see around me, a uh, brand new space today. I uh, have my new art desk here with a nice little incline on it, so I don't have to lean over the counter all the time. Uh, we'll see how that lends itself to actually shooting video, of course, but starting a brand new piece here. Um, I've zoomed in to just a portion of it. Uh, but it is 16 by 20. The intent for this is to send it off to a statewide art competition. Uh, that competition judging is in April. Uh, the preliminary judging is in April. So a little bit of time to go before uh, we find out how it's gonna how it's gonna work out for me. But I'm gonna take this piece pretty seriously. Uh, you can see there's already splashes of color on here. Probably looks a little rough, uh, at least it does to me. But what are you going to do? You got to start someplace, right? So here we go. Um, I'm going to work in this area here today. We've got a lot of, guess what, dead grass and uh, twigs and such again. There's kind of a recurring theme come winter time. But I put in, you know, kind of the highlight areas here where the grass, uh, the sun's reflecting off of the grass. All of the areas that are currently white are either snow covered or they are darker shades of the same dead grasses and such. And uh, so we're just going to work on building some of that out right now. So we're going to, I'm just mixing up here a little bit of orange, yellow, brown. And uh, we're going to just start slopping it on the page here and see what takes shape. I think that'll work. And I have my laptop over behind me, which is going to make things a bit more challenging as I get used to what this new space is going to look like. Uh, and you can see here, just going in kind of to the base of where these highlighted areas are and uh, building in a little bit of depth there. And obviously I've sketched out some pretty significant areas here um, to help make this process a little easier um, and better for me to see what's actually going on. And we're off. So I'm just going to continue to kind of work these edges to give them a little bit of depth. But, uh, you know, I was going to talk a little bit about self-confidence. Um, I notice on the regular that there are a lot of people out there that struggle uh, with self-confidence or a lack thereof. And, you know, I, I talk a lot about not giving up and not quitting. You know, seeing projects through, learning, growing, all of that. And I believe all of those things um, help with self-confidence as well. Uh, when I was a child, I was a very shy, nervous little boy. Uh, who didn't, I didn't like meeting new people, I was scared of my own shadow, and uh, it really was a rough kind of childhood from that standpoint. You know, I was fortunate enough, I had friends who I had met at school and such, so we would play games. I was not necessarily a lonely kid, but uh, when it came time for baseball season, for instance, t-ball season, I did not want to do it. I was petrified. I didn't have self-confidence. I thought all of these other boys are going to be older and better. And, you know, at, at that age, four, five, six, seven, all the way up till, I don't know, now, uh, we, we struggle with the notion that uh, we don't have enough experience or expertise to do a particular something, whatever that might be. And it's really unfortunate because it, it hinders us 
it holds us back from our potential, from being who we can be. Uh, you know, I've mentioned that the, the biggest roadblock to success is fear and, uh, you know, a lack of self-confidence certainly plays into that fear game and it's, it's too bad, uh, you know, and I still suffer at times from low self-confidence. I think that's, that's something we probably never ever actually shake in our entire life, which <laughs> is probably going to make some of you sad to hear me say that, right? Um, it, it's just the way it is. You know, I, I work currently at a senior living facility, and one thing that I have learned watching the advanced aged, advanced elderly, is that a lot of the things that you and I might believe that we are going to outgrow as we get older, um, in many cases, sadly actually become magnified. Um, you know, the upside of that is that if you are a particularly kind person, you are probably going to get more kind the older you get. Uh, but when it comes to some of our our internal neuroses, our our the things that most scare us actually tend to be magnified the older we get, and uh, that should be a little bit of concerning, I think, to all of us. And you know, the point here is not to be depressing or to you know hurt your self confidence even more, but uh, only to point out that if we aren't striving now. Um, to be stronger, better, more confident people, uh, we're going to take the opposite direction, unfortunately. At least that has been my experience. Um, but that said, you know, I didn't explore a lot of really interesting opportunities as a child because of fear or because of a lack of self-confidence. And, uh, you know, it stunted my development in many ways, and I'm still paying for some of that on the backside, unfortunately. Uh, one thing that I never learned was to play the piano, and that's something I, you know, regret intensely. Um, my mother wanted me to take piano lessons, but I was, I was too scared, I was too nervous, I lacked the self-confidence and didn't understand that I would have to practice, that it wouldn't come, you know, naturally to me, and that there would be, you know, a period of growth and development where I would build that self-confidence. Um, and that's, you know, as with so many things, it's always a process. You know, it's, it's never as simple as picking it up and going, um, you know, right down to the old pro proverbial riding a bicycle. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody that picked that up the very first time they sat on a bicycle seat and just went zip and off they went. You, you know, you have to learn how to do that as a child. And uh, it takes practice. And it takes some confidence the first time that your parent uh, let's go of the seat and you're off, you know, and pedaling by yourself. You probably, you know, fell a couple of times and were able and were coached to get back on that bike and ride, and it's a good thing you did, or you never would have learned. But you, you had to develop that confidence to be able to take off the training wheels if you were lucky enough to have them and pedal off on your own for the very first time. Um, it's, you know, that process repeats and repeats itself in so many ways without, uh, throughout our lifetime, but I think we, we kind of uh, forget that. And we forget that we are valuable people who have assets to provide the world uh, you know, it just becomes a case of, well, I'm no good at that, or people don't value my opinion. Um, Got to fight through that barrier. Absolutely, because uh, people do value your opinion, but sometimes you have to be confident enough to say it in a crowded room. You, uh, people won't 
likely seek out your opinion if you are shy, if you sit in the back, if you don't offer it up from time to time. And, uh, you know, I, I learned how to do that over a period of, you know, 20 years. And I want to tell you that as, as much as I may sound like I've got it together, uh, I, will, I will tell you that my 30s were pretty rough on me. Um, I, I lost my self-confidence for a while. And I can't precisely say why. I, I potentially can attribute that to the loss of my parents. Um, they, both of my parents died of cancer when I was in my mid-20s. Um, my father passed when I was in my early 20s. So I had to deal with that hardship. And I was blessed to have a very supportive mother. Uh, and father too for that matter, but particularly my mother. And so I think, you know, looking back, what I can maybe say is that uh, losing my mother was a key to that loss of self-confidence because she had always previously been the one to kind of prop me up and to make sure that that I had support and that uh, I had somebody behind me encouraging me. So I think when she passed, that put me in a place where I didn't have that anymore and I had to learn how to do that myself. And fortunately, through my, through my college years, I kind of had already figured that out. But it took me a while, I think, to kind of recover from that and to remember that skill and the usefulness of it. So my, my 30s were a bit of a train wreck in some ways, financially, job security, uh, just a lot of stuff that previously had not been an issue for me, it cropped its way in again. Uh, and I think, you know, you've heard the term failing up before, and that's kind of what it took for me to get back on the correct track. And uh, it was ultimately, again, a leap in self-confidence born of frustration of all things. Uh, I was a graphic artist and marketing professional for 20 years, give or take, and uh, pretty darn good at it when I applied myself. I had my own business for a while. Turns out that uh, that's one that was taught me a lot of valuable lessons. I shouldn't own a business. That's kind of the lesson that I learned. As much as good as I was at my craft, at being a graphic artist and a marketing professional, uh, I was not good at managing my own time within that space. So when I was on a deadline, it was great. Things were rolling. When times got slow, I was not uh, much of a self-promoter. I took for granted that people knew me and knew what skills I possessed. Like, how did they not know I could build websites? Isn't that apparent? Well, clearly it wasn't, and uh, I didn't, didn't handle that part of life very well. So I, I, was, I was reasonably successful, but when the rubber hit the road, it was time for me to uh, go to something that offered me a little more stability and benefits. Uh, the, the health benefits seem to be a thing as we get older. I just, just a little nugget there if you hadn't already figured that one out. But I was working for a small not-for-profit part-time, doing the graphic arts and whatnot, and just getting really intensely frustrated with life. And started kind of re-examining where I had failed in my own business, why that did not come out the way, you know, maybe I had hoped it would. Um, and the more frustrated I got, the more I had to tell myself that I have value and that I was X, Y, and Z when I was in high school and college, and what had changed? Nothing really had changed other than my attitude and approach to those things. So 
over the course of a couple of months, as I kind of re-examined everything, I was able to jump back into life in a big way, uh, and, and largely, as I said, failing up, because I had the confidence, self-confidence, to apply for a job in a world that I knew nothing about. I became a maintenance director. It's a true story. Went from, went from marketing and graphic design to maintenance director. Uh, I have a staff of 11 uh, over three different departments, and I keep the ship cruising as smoothly as is possible in a world that's constantly changing. And uh, I'm pretty good at it. I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm confident enough to say that. But it was, uh, it, it took me refreshing and rebuilding that self-confidence in order to get to the place where I could even apply for that position. Because what, why would, why would a graphic artist ever apply for that? Well, I was tired of being fat and lazy, um, spent way too much time sitting on my duff behind the computer and social media-ing among other things but I thought you know what why can't I have this job what what is holding me back because I've got leadership skills I've got communication skills I've got organizational skills all of which are very important in this in this particular world so you know why why can't I apply and so I did, and I know here's another bugaboo for a great many of you, the in-person interview. Yeah, the fun stuff. Um, you know, it's, it can be difficult to walk into the in-person interview in front of somebody you've never met and sell skills. But here's the beauty of it. Most of the time, you'll never see that person again unless you get the job. So you, you cannot outright lie too much about how great you are at the things you do. Because if you do get hired, you have to then show those skills. But at the same time, you can go into that interview scenario and talk yourself up, man. Brag away. This is, this is the one time in your professional world where it's okay to tell people how great you are. In fact, they want to hear that. And so... You know, I was able to go into that interview and just sell the heck out of myself and get the job. Um, but it was self-confidence. That had been that missing component through my 30s uh, that was not allowing me to move forward. And it's kind of a dread existence when you aren't moving forward. You know, uh, I've, I've commented, you know, or you've heard it before on movies too for that matter, but, you know, if you aren't busy living, you're busy dying. You know, so uh, it, you have to press forward, you have to move out of your comfort zone from time to time and do things and say things with an air of self-confidence that you might, you know, that you might be lacking currently. But what you'll also find is the more confident you are, the more confidence you will have. And it takes a little time, you know, it's, it's one of those things that flips and turns on you that uh, you know becomes its own self-perpetuating cycle so you know the 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 more confidence that you exude the more confidence you'll grow is is just fantastic food for thought because uh, to do videos for instance requires a level of self-confidence and it's not because I think I'm particularly good at it or that I, you know, I thought, I'm just going to do this and people are going to subscribe and I'm going to make money, you know, all the fun stuff there. It's just a truly a matter of having the confidence to step out of my comfort zone, try something new, which it turns out I really enjoy and I hope you, you know, enjoy my, my thoughts as well. But, you know, having that confidence... And growing that confidence allows you to do things, try things, and get better at things that you never thought possible. And there's my alarm. Uh, so, you know, grow, do, be confident in who you are.
<laughs> so, nothing without its adventures. That was my clock, or my uh, camera, the other camera just ran out of battery about two minutes too early. So that's that's enormously frustrating, but we're gonna roll with it. This is, uh, as I said, this one would be a particular challenge. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. <sighs> Remember that scene from Wayne's World? Dumb movie, even a dumb scene, but all of a sudden <laughs> it falls right into place for me. So I'm pretty well wrapped up here. But uh, from a self-confidence standpoint, if you ain't got some, go get some. I know you can't go out to the store and buy it. That's unfortunate. It'd be a lot easier if we could. But you can manufacture it yourself and it costs you nothing. Uh, you just have to come to the realization and understanding <laughs> that you are a valuable person and the assets and skills that you bring to the table are worthy of you being confident about yourself who you are and what you can contribute in any given situation. So I got my scotch. We painted in some shadow areas. Uh, probably had I not started rambling and staring at the other camera, would have gotten a little farther, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you see the depth starting to build out on, on these grasses here. And I will continue to work with this piece even while you're not around. So next time we can try something different. But nevertheless, I am going to uh, cut out of this one, have another sip of scotch, and uh, go out there, create something. We'll talk to you again soon.